Hi everybody, Brian here. I'm at my bench today and we're taking care of some of the small details that have to be done in order to move forward with the A10 build. We're going to be painting some of the engine parts and finish masking off and painting the tires and working on the engine nacelles. Starting out though, I need some metallic paint for the visible components on the engine, but I don't have exactly the color I want, so I'm going to take this bottle of Tester's Metallic Gray. It, it's too light for what I need, and we're going to try to darken it up using some of my homemade alcohol ink. At first, I wasn't certain if this was just going to destroy this bottle of paint, but it actually worked out beautifully. I got just exactly the color I was looking for, and I think that little bit of alcohol even helped the paint go on a little smoother. Now, I don't recommend using alcohol as a thinner, except in specific cases where you need a really rapid drying time or you're going to end up with a bad case of tip dry. You also have to be careful because not all paint reacts well with isopropyl alcohol. Some of them will curl up just like cottage cheese and will completely clog your airbrush, which recently just happened to me. And you know, the most painful lessons most people learn were the hard way. So I, I can't recommend enough to when you're working with a new paint and a new thinner that if you haven't used together before, do a little test um, somewhere outside the airbrush so that uh, you don't end up having to buy new parts for your airbrush like I did. That said though, this mixture went on smoothly over the primer and it only took two light coats to cover everything and I thought it was a reasonable facsimile of the nickel aluminum alloys that are used to make jet engines. As usual though, I'm not able to finish a paint job up without messing something up and having to touch it up, which I had to do on a couple of pieces. But the paint seemed to be pretty forgiving and it worked out okay. If you're following along, you'll remember the previous video where we painted the hubs on the wheels and we're ready to move on to painting the rubber on the tires and some of the other parts that, that call for black. The masking on the tires worked out really well, but it wasn't perfect and we'll have a few little places to touch up, but we're gonna see if, how much of that we can take care of when we mask off the hubs. The process I'm using to mask off the hubs is very similar to the one I use to mask off the tires, only in reverse. I started out here with just the standard hardware store masking tape and it was going okay, but, but I wanted to try out the 3M frog tape I had picked up to see how it did. It was slightly better, but only marginally so, and I'm not sure I see the point of the extra expense for this tape, at least not in this application. With the front wheel though, uh, it was much smaller, so I thought cutting the circle out beforehand would be easier and it was and I'm actually thinking I probably should have done this done all three of these this way
Here I'm using my backup airbrush, which is not a, it's not, it's designed to work with a um, continuous feed compressor where it just doesn't have a, uh, you don't turn, you can't turn the air on and off. It's, the air is on continuously and then it works like a single action where you just press it down and the paint comes out. You, you do have a little bit of control, but not like a, not like a good double action brush like I normally use. Once I had everything masked off, the black paint went on pretty quick, and uh, as long as I didn't try to put it on too thick, and the pieces were all done, and we just had a little scraping and sanding to do in order to glue them together. Next, I moved on to actually gluing the parts into the nacelles. And for this, I went with the, the tester cement in the red tube. It's a good strong glue. It holds really well, but it's pretty messy and the drying time is it's a little slower than I need for this application. But the alternative I have is CA glue and it's too fast and it has a tendency to leave a a fog or a film around the surrounding areas and for this application the testers was the best I had to use at the moment if you've got a suggestion for something that sort of has in between the the plastic cement and the CA glue or super glue I'd love it if you could leave it in the comments and let me know what it is also, if you like what you've seen so far, I'd appreciate it if you would hit that like button. It really does help YouTube show my content to other like-minded individuals such as yourself. Coming up, we're going to be getting the body of the airplane ready for uh, primer and paint. Uh, if you'd like to go back and check out some of the previous videos in the series, the playlist is here on the left. The next video is on the right, and there's a subscribe button right there in the middle. If you'd like to be notified when I post my next video, you know what to do. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.